Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over a synopsis with Christian DeQuan. who's going to talk today about physical verification in the cloud. Christian, what's changed in the cloud? We've he been hearing about the cloud for years in verification of all sorts, yet it still hasn't caught on. It's just beginning to get a lot more interest. Why now and what's changed? Uh, first of all, you know, you're right. We talk about the cloud in EDA and different, you know, sign-off and physical verification tool for a while. But the problem is the ecosystem was not ready. And, uh, you know, there was some press release last year that enabled, you know, customer to use the cloud for their sign-off, uh, thanks to foundries enabling uh, the tool to be there. In the past, some companies literally wouldn't allow data out of their uh, four walls. It was against company policy. Have the rules changed? Have people recognized that they can't do everything and it, it just makes good economic sense to do this in the cloud? Uh, it's two things. Uh, in one hand, uh, the company, the semiconductor company, realized that the need for CPU is increasing drastically and they need uh, more than just increasing their farm. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the ecosystem around the semiconductor company realized they could not close the door anymore. Uh, if you look at what happened last year, uh, there were several audits done by uh, some foundries and the customer to prove that if they use within this virtual uh, enablement uh, environment, they would be safe to use a physical verification tool or any EDA tool in this environment. I mean, that was the main problem. It's always the same. Is There's a risk, but I think it was audited that is as secure than if you use your same farm. You know, today the farm of customer are not all in-premise. Some are in different regional location, right? Why don't you draw this out for us? Of course. So what have you drawn out here? Uh, you know, physical verification in the cloud is enabled by the ecosystem today. Uh, we have customer, who, we know customer who already take part in the cloud. Uh, there's a few of them, but it's become a reality. Now, having the cloud just to have the cloud is one thing, but you need to do things speci specifically for. So one of the terms that's been floating around here is cloud readiness. What exactly does that mean when it comes to EDA? Yes, when you come to EDA, cloud readiness could be just, it's run on the cloud, and that's been around for a while. Uh, but I think you need to have the software to be adapted to the cloud uh, advantages. Uh, you know, in some of the cloud provider, you have these spot uh, hours where the CPU gets cheaper. You should be able to increase the number of CPU you have in that time and get the best, uh, the best utilization. If you look, the usual, I'm talking about physical verification because it's the easiest for me to talk, but if you look the usual, right, if you ask for 500 CPU, right, you have to wait that these 500 CPU are available and then you will have these 500 CPU used all along. Now, with this elasticity that, you know, the cloud is always talking about, that you can have more and less CPU, uh, if the tool could ramp up, adding CPU on the fly and removing them when they become more expensive or when you later in, in your physical vacation cycle, that's the best utilization because this is the best performance CPU utilization ratio you can get. And I will say a, every sign-off tool in the cloud should be able to do that because that's what the customer wants. This is sort of brute force for hire, but what you're trying to do is is economize wherever you're po wherever it's possible, right? Yes, it's correct. And and if you look, I, I'll take again the physical verification example. When you load the GDS or the Oasis, right, the first step, and you do the pre-processing, this can take, depending on the the complexity of the rule and the design side, can take like half an hour. Why do you need 500 CPU to do that? This can be done in one or 16 CPU. That's a waste of CPU if you just use 500 CPU to do that. Has it changed also because some of the companies that are developing these very large chips are new to the chip business? So you've got companies like the, the big systems companies, Apple, Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. they're all developing their own chips. Yes. They never did that in the past. It's not stri the strictly the chip makers who had all this stuff internally that are new to this. Yeah, I would say that's one, but these big company have a lot of CPU in-house. And by the way, we talk about the cloud, but that could be the internal cloud or farm. This advantage can be run in the farm on the cloud, where we see a lot of company going to this kind of cloud offering Elastic. They do startup in AI, for instance. There's like a dozen of startup in AI. They're new to the business. As you say, the system company, they don't have a farm that can run CPU, 500 CPU. These are perfect for cloud usage. 
Are they doing more with it than just verification? So in the past, when we thought about the cloud, it was pretty much let's get through debug and, and the final stages of verification, which is generally where you used to hire extra bodies for this. Yes, there's some application in EDA that are more cloud friendly. Physical verification is one, uh, you know, verification in general is one, a sign off is another. Uh, making design in the cloud is, you know, always been a question, but the customer we know that using the cloud is the full flow in the cloud. But when you think about a billion transistor design or a two billion transistor design, even layout becomes a massive undertaking. Sure. Uh, that's where you have to really look where your cloud provider is, where it's going to be located because you don't want, you know, some issue to transfer with long FTP. Now for physical verification, it's pretty easy. You only send a design, Oasis can be, you know, 20 gigabytes, it takes 10, 20 minute max, meaning it's pretty quick to send that and the rule deck on the cloud and run. Some other, like, you know, uh, if you do static timing analysis, you have huge amount of data. If you put all the corner together, it's about a terabyte of, uh, of um, data that you need to send on the cloud, meaning you have to be much more educated on the process. It sounds great, but what issues remain? What still has to be fixed when people are using the cloud? Yeah, uh, there's a few things we have to take. You know, the CPU utilization is one, that's great. Uh, but there's a question like fail safe, right? What happens if one of the hosts on the cloud die, right? Uh, if, uh, you know, when you do, let's say, your physical verification, one of those die, you lose two days of burn, uh, that will be terrible. Uh, the tool has to be adapt adapted to that, meaning if there's a host that uh, die, uh, the tool should be able to recover and, and, and not restart from scratch, right? Uh, that's really important. Uh, and that's part also of the elasticity kind of uh, thing, but nobody really talk about that. Uh, first of all, we want to talk about failing uh, machine, but it's something you have to take care about. The other thing also is performance is really important, but also in the cloud, different machines have different pricing, meaning if you can fit in a smaller memory machine type of machine, then it's cheaper for the customer. That's why the tool to be cloud, not ready, but friendly, need to adapt to the kind of machine available with a lower memory. You also need to think about total cost of ownership. If you actually had these in-house, it's not just buying the equipment, it's also maintaining it, upgrading it, uh, keeping the software going. And also when you have a failure, that causes the same problem you've run into in the cloud. Yes. That's the beauty. Everything we try to build for the cloud will resonate perfectly to a farm or hybrid. We see some customer making hybrid between farm and cloud on premise and on the cloud. Um, you know, everything that we discuss here will work really well in this case. Afterwards, it's really from the customer to decide, right? We have customer who decide to go full cloud. Uh, if you don't, if you need dedicated, really expensive machine, doesn't might not work, meaning you have to make sure you make a good a choice balancing the hardware need with your software readiness to run on that hardware. Is there any group, any region that does this better than others, adapts to it more easily? Uh, Is it more accepted in Europe, for example, than it would be in the United States? I, I would say a lot of the customer we saw that are talking about the cloud and, uh, you know, even being uh, vocal about it uh, are either in the U.S or they, uh, they some in China as well, uh, but also the cloud provider themselves, right? Amazon and, you know, the Microsoft, they also do their own chip, meaning, you know, I think there was a public appearance uh, in Israel where Amazon said that they run uh, one of the tools on the cloud, which was great uh, because they sell the cloud, they should, when they run, uh, you know, they design should also uh, be on the cloud. Christian Dequan, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.